الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا All oh, praise is due to Allah We praise Him abundantly And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad His companions And every and each person who follows them on the righteous path until the day of judgment uh, brothers and sisters in Islam whenever we think of the favors and the bounties of Allah upon us the mind gets puzzled and we are unable to enumerate them as Allah says in the Quran وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِنْ تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُخْسُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Interpretation of the meaning in English And He has given you Of everything that you asked for And if you were to count the bounties and the favors of Allah You will be unable to do so You will not be able to count them or enumerate them Verily, the human being is oppressive and ungrateful as a general characteristic unless Iman comes in and then this is not the case anymore. This particular verse and many other verses and narrations from the Prophet ﷺ give us the understanding that the bounties of Allah are too many and each one of us is experiencing some of these bounties currently as we speak. The blessing of hearing. You're hearing me right now. Uh, had it not been for Allah, His favor, Allah's favor is upon you, you can't hear. There are people who are unable to hear. The bounty of sight. You're looking. You're able to see. And then the sight is converted into information. So then your brain understands a particular thing based on the image that you see. Then the brain itself, how it is functioning, how it is receiving my speech, analyzing my speech. Even if it's a foreign language that is not your mother tongue, you manage to understand and comprehend what is being said to you. Then the fact that you are breathing this breath, that you don't have to walk around with an oxygen tank to continue to breathe, or you need some machinery or something, some battery to keep your system functioning. Rather, it happens all by the will of Allah and the maintenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last but not least, the beating of the heart and the fact that blood continues to pump for you to survive. These are some bounties that human beings often are neglect, neglectful of. They don't pay attention to them because they're so habitual, so daily, so common that we sometimes forget that at the end of the day, these are bounties of Allah. And we can say something similar to that when it comes to food and drink and livelihood and marriage and children, everything in this world. Whether available or the lack of that. Because sometimes Allah will deprive us of some things as a bounty. Sometimes you think that goodness is in something and Allah does not give it to you as a bounty of Allah upon you. But we, don't, we have short sight. So we think that this is actually being deprived of something. What well, actually will be, we are being given something. So, to generally speak, the bounties of Allah are too many. One may ask, which one is the most valuable? I mean, what is the best kind of bounty that I, as a human being, have? And the answer should be known to everyone. And I will ask someone to possibly help. Mr. Faisal, Islam. Islam, the greatest bounty, let's put it in terminology that other people of other religions may understand, correct faith, having correct faith, and we really want to emphasize on the word correct, because you may have faith in Satan, and you may have faith in falsehood, and you may have faith in everything that will distance you from the right path. And you may be very faithful in that. So just the mere concept of having faith as it making a distinction between the people with faith versus the people with, without faith is not really a sufficient distinction. Rather, we have to further investigate 
and see is this faith that this person is claiming, is it the correct faith or otherwise? So Allah has blessed the followers of Noah with the correct faith by believing in the oneness of Allah and shunning the worship of idols that became common among them. As they come in the Quran, they became their inter intercessors, their intermediaries with Allah. Although they were commanded to worship Allah, the one true God alone. So Allah divided the creation into those who are upon the correct faith. So this was his favor upon them. And those who rejected Noah, and everybody knows what happened to them. They drowned. They were all drowned. So, these people were favored and given the most valuable bounty of all correct faith. Similarly, the same situation was with Ibrahim والسلام, They were those who believed in him and worshipped Allah alone and believed in him as a messenger of Allah. And there were those who rejected him and they tried to kill him and, and get rid of him and what have you. Everybody knows the stories and the result was the same. Victory was given to the messenger and his followers and disgrace and humility and loss was given to those who opposed them. And the same thing happened with Musa, Moses and Pharaoh. He again opposed the messenger of Allah and claimed to be a God. And everybody knows what happened to, Mo <coughs> to Pharaoh. <coughs> he drowned. Allah made the ocean go over him. The same way he used to brag that the rivers are going under him. When he was uh, claiming to be a god, he told his pe people, وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي يَا قَوْمِ أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرِ Oh my people, don't you see that I am the owner of Egypt? The whole Egypt, all of Egypt belongs to me. And these rivers are flowing under me. The scholars say this shows how feeble-minded he was. Because when you want to brag about something, you brag about something that you have within you as a human being. Not about something that Allah created. What does that mean that there are rivers flowing under you? That's not something that makes you any better than anyone else. You may be a wicked, you may be a liar, you may be a disbeliever, and have many rivers flowing under you. So even his understanding of things were, was very limited, obviously, that's why he rejected the messenger. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? He made the, the water, the same water that he bragged that he was above, he was under the water, and he went over him. And the same thing happened with Jesus, peace be upon him. They were his disciples, those who believed in him as a messenger of God, and they believed in the oneness and the uniqueness of God, and they were given victory versus those who opposed him and tried to kill him and crucify him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again saved the, his righteous servants from the wickedness of the people who are known for having the quality of disbelief. They always want to oppose the messenger. They find reasons to disbelieve. How, you, how are you going to disbelieve in a man who by the will of Allah brought someone from death into life? Someone who healed a, per, uh, he healed a person who was born blind. Someone with a skin disease, the leper was healed by simply al-masih. That's why it's called the Messiah. By simply wiping over him. But bi idhnillah. How are you going to tell this person you are a liar, you are a, a magician? These are miracles that only are done by the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet they rejected him. This was the history. And then the bounty that we have been 